So, uh, the photo book for the uh, MA project, the big front room, uh, arrived uh, two or three days ago and um, I'm just going to talk you through it and evaluate along the way the pluses and the minuses, uh, the, sort of the things that jump out at me as being uh, things that are uh, effective and things that are less effective. Um, to look at the book, it's a hardback cover, it's quite a big book. And I'm particularly pleased with the, the spread of the title page front and back, which is one single image, which is really quite intriguing and I'm really sort of pleased with that. Um, it really sets the tone for the book. There is, uh, obviously you could look at this picture for ages, spotting the different faces in the crowd and it creates a really sort of a, a, sort of a, um, a sort of a milestone of what we're trying to do in this project. So, what I've done is I've marked some of the positives and negatives. Um, there are 180 pages, so I will try and highlight uh, some of the main main points to talk about. Um, for the start with the book, I went for a dust cover, so I included uh, an introduction and a an artist profile on the dust cover, which I think works quite well. Um, although I am going to review whether I may possibly have a hard wrap, image wrap for the final um, book, just for the sake of hardware, for being hard wearing and sort of resilience. If we move into the book, um, the title page I'm really pleased with, um, a big strong font, I've used uh, Century Gothic to try and fit in with the, uh, the sensibility of the Art Deco feel to the project of the theatre itself. I think that works particularly well. And this font moves and continues throughout the book. Um, the first uh, few pages are um, image spreads across two pages just to try and get a flavour of the three different things that we're talking about in the uh, project, which are the theatre. Um, this was a drone shot. Uh, the artists so a live performance image and the fans so no captions they should be uh, designed to be self-explanatory uh, and then we move on to um, the different chapters I've split it into six different chapters to try and create a strong image flow uh, and a story and a dialogue throughout the book um, so I'll talk about that a little bit later so we're moving on to one area of a little bit of disappointment and sort of a, a realisation <clears throat> is this in, initial introduction to uh, the theatre itself uh, for those of, of people who are obviously not familiar with the building and I chose a font which now doesn't really work, I, doesn't, they, I feel really works uh, this font reappears later in the project and it is more effective later and I'll come to that in a few minutes uh, but uh, as, as an, introduction, an introduction to the project I felt maybe a simpler sans uh, font uh, would have been more appropriate here. That's something I'm going to go back and review and maybe redesign. Okay. Another uh, sort of uh, realization of something I'm going to uh, attend to in the design is, <coughs> excuse me, is that a lot of the images I feel as though I've placed them quite close to the margins of the uh, of the book, and they don't sit comfortably on the page. I don't feel. Um, this is an example here where it, the margins are just a little bit too thin, it feels as though it's clinging to the edge of the page and I feel as though I have to need to reduce the size of some of the images so they feel more comfortable on the page uh, and it, is, uh, it, is, um, it does become obvious later in the book when you see smaller images that they're actually a smaller image even though it is smaller, uh, has got quite a lot of visual impact. So that's one of the big things on the learning curve for this book is that the image layouts and how they're cling, some of them cling to the edge of the pages. Um, moving to the next <coughs> tab, I, I, is a, I've highlighted <coughs> as of a positive area. Moving on from the, the last conversation, <coughs> um, in the areas where I've used quite a lot of um, open space, there's quite a lot of maximum impact. Um, particularly from the image on the opposite page, <coughs> excuse me. So a slightly minimalistic approach to some of the pages has worked really successfully, and I think that's highlighted on this page here, just with a very small caption in the bottom. This is an image that really didn't work, and this highlights another issue I have with the gutter of the page um, affecting and influencing some of the images. This one here is actually one single image of a door and the uh, the circle 
foyer behind it but because of the gutter and um, it feels as though it's two separate images which is not what I was trying to portray so the, uh, the principle of the gutter in the middle uh, affecting the pages does crop up through quite a lot of my images so I'm going to review whether that image would actually be included in the final work. Again highlighted here that uh, the gutter uh, has, uh, I realise the, the gutter would affect the image but in this case it's affected it to a, uh, a greater degree where I think actually it need some uh, to move the image to the left or right to actually maximise that important centre section of the window there. So I'm reviewing a lot of the images as a result of this, uh, um, as the positioning where the gutter is and the impact of the image. <coughs> Excuse me. So again, moving here on to what I'd say was a positive was this this creative input um, uh, of this, some of the images that I've included in the book where in this particular case it's a montage of the surfaces I found on the outside of the building. I think that works really well and works really strong uh, across two pages and is a, 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 an effective addition to the book. Um, again, now we move on to the artists and the fans and you can see that the continuation of the use of the uh, century, Gothic century. Um, font and we uh, are moving into an area now where I think some positive things are happening. A big statement at the beginning across two pages of a live show, lots of colour, and I think that was really effective as a way of introducing that chapter. Uh, and again, this is a page I really like. Again, the use of minimal, minimal use of space there, and a strong image with quite a visual impact of uh, the, visu the visuals of the three goths uh, looking straight at the camera. And that's <coughs> um, does sort of a uh, highlights what I was trying to do in the project, that sort of interaction with the fans. Um, so that was good. Um, a technical negativity here really is uh, with uh, some of the reprint. The print production in the book is, generally speaking, is excellent. But when there are very, very vivid colours, uh, as there have been on two or three of the images, it really doesn't reproduce well. It comes out in a slightly muddy, uh, unsaturated image. Um, which is a bit of a disappointment, although to someone viewing it from the first time would perhaps not notice that. Okay. Uh, this I thought was a great page. I love this image of the uh, the Elvis fans visiting the Apollo all outside with their paraphernalia. In, in turned to black and white, obviously to keep in the feel of the era. Um, the expressions on the face, I thought that was a massive success. That I really like that page. Okay. More positives. Um, Johnny Marr at the Apollo, two images I think really work, contrasting the black and white and the colour and the positioning of the heads, both looking out of the shot and uh, the different size of images and layout, I think is a really great page. That, that was something that uh, I was immensely proud of. Okay. Um, another creative, uh, positive creative input here was the uh, a shot I did uh, to emphasise the heritage of the building, so I just took a single archive image and held it up against the building to contrast it uh, as like a creative statement. Again, used across a double page, I thought that worked really well. On. Again, another creative statement which was particularly thought worked particularly worked well was this montage of tickets, which took quite a long time to put together in Photoshop. But um, it's one of those pages you can dwell on for quite a long time, taking lots of information, and really is an, it really adds to a lot to the book. Uh, in, you know, it's quite a fun page to, as, as well to look at. Um, moving into what I would consider as a couple more pages. Um, quotations. Again, these are the quotations from artists that I interviewed at the, uh, at the Apollo. Uh, and here is this uh, typewriter font again that we mentioned earlier, which I didn't think was as, worked very well and was effective earlier on as an introduction. But I think works well here. I chose the typewriter font as a sort of almost like a documentary style, um, almost like a conversation in a magazine or a newspaper. So that reflects really well on that page, although I think probably the font is a little bit too large on these, but I think that worked against the photograph of the uh, artist in question and I thought that was great and I was really pleased with that. Um, coming towards the end of the book, book completing on 
um, sort of chronologically, uh, chronologically I should say, the, uh, the sort of final images of the book are those pages of the, the cleaning up after a show. Um, it brings the book to a conclusion. Um, but when I turn a page, I have a final sort of um, conclusion image there. And I'm just thinking whether this space here could be used in some way. Um, some information, to very, be it, albeit small, could be used on that page there. So, all in all, um, very pleased. I think there's more positives than negatives in the book that I've produced as a test. Although the negative ones are very, very informative and do impact on the general look and, uh, and flow of the book. Uh, so the test book was invaluable, really, for me to sort of put straight... Um, some of those technical and creative uh, changes I need to make to make sure that final publication is exactly right. Thank you very much indeed.